Find out what's going on. Get involved. Change things from the inside. Make a difference. Take pride. Multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. On you simply the best. Get inspired. On the show, Isabella Strickland. Isabella is a powerful young talent, a learning disability advocate, empowers others against bullying through arts. At 15 years old, Isabella is already a multi-award winning filmmaker, award winning actress, award winning media host, and award winning writer. It was fun. I, I did it with my dad. As a variety youth ambassador, Isabella recently hosted Global BC's 55th annual show of hearts, Telephone. Overcoming anxiety, ADHD, and dyslexia with her superpowers, Isabella wants to pass on her techniques on mindfulness to those around her. I work on writing or reading. And I go to a school that helps me with that. And our fun moment. Like, well, what do you do to relax? I make ramen. <gasps> I make. Get ready to be inspired. All these coming up. Hello. Nice to see you all. We have an amazing guest. She's only 15 years old. She's very, very talented. Despite her dyslexia, ADHD, and anxiety, she is a fantastic host, actor, author, filmmaker, dancer, and more. Joining us today is Isabella Strickland. Are you also a thief? I'm not a thief. I'm your mom. Well, then whose guitar is in the trunk? Remember that night? How could I forget it? You still feeling the same? I can't believe you're going to do this without telling me. No, this is wrong. What happened between mom and dad wasn't our fault. It was theirs. And now we have to forgive them? I don't think I can do that. I don't want to give it back. I love it. It's mine now. It's not about them, Maya. It's about you. Anyway, can we go home now? I can't wait to try it out. No. But... Maya! It's not yours. You didn't do anything to earn it. But you do everything and you earn nothing. Are you sure? Hello, Isabella. Welcome to Simply the Best. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure. Uh, Sabella, you are only 15 years old and you have a very impressive list of awards in film, acting, hosting, and writing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, which one are you most passionate about and why? Mm, may all of them are a gift that I would win. And uh, it's amazing that so many people so much put so much hard work and someone sees my film that I was personally a part of and thinks that it has potential or it's amazing. I'd say my script produced is the one I'm most happy about right now because it, it has the most opportunity for it to spiral into something amazing. You have anxiety. ADHD and dyslexia, and you learn to cope with it. How do you deal with this in a daily basis? Uh, as you can imagine, it can be hard. ADHD um, has its good things and its bad things. It comes with anxiety, it comes with depression. You can get ticks with it. You, there's, there's so much more that you can get attached to ADHD and dyslexia. Um, but through the day, I would work on writing or reading, and I go to a school that helps me with that. Because if I didn't and I was in the public system, I would not be where I am now, and I definitely know that. 
uh, it's a private school in North Van that um, helps kids with learning challenges or learning differences. And it helps so many people each year. And I am so grateful that I get to go there because it helped me find my belonging and my courage for where I am. Cause I see people like me and I have friends like me who understand what I go through and I understand what they go through. So we can help each other. What's the best part of going, like uh, going to school? I find it fun now. Cause in order, something I've learned for, for literally everyone, in order to learn and absorb the information and understand it, you need to have fun with it. And you need to understand what's going on. You need to understand the premise. Cause if you're not engaged, you're not going to be engaged with the program itself. So being engaged is really important for learning anything, learning film, learning soccer, learning school too. Even though math might seem hard, I, I like math now. I didn't think I would ever. I thought it was the worst thing in the world because you're learning how to put the alphabet into math now, which is something I didn't think would be useful, but it apparently it is. So um, that's nice. And I'm grateful that I can finally have fun in school. What's your favorite subject? This term, I would say, my favorite class is photography because we're developing live film, which is really cool. And I love it. And I have a film camera now and I'm so happy. And I really love PE. Everyone hates PE. I don't know why. But I like PE. I like PE. I, like I, I know, come on. People <laughs> in high school try and get out of it. And I understand that because it can kind of be annoying sometimes, but you know, it can be fun because we play games and not learn. And I like art. But last term, I would say my favorite was science because we were doing chemistry and I love chemistry. A really long time ago, I wanted to be a fashion designer and then I wanted to do science and then I wanted to be a baker and then I wanted to be an astrophysicist. Baker from astrophysicist is a really long jump. I just feel like that. That's okay. I, I like space. So um, I would need some type of chemistry degree in that. Um, so I, I like chemistry, but I wanted to be a nurse because both my sisters are in the um, medical industry and I find that amazing. And I, I wanted to do something that would help people. And uh, my passion though is in art because I find it fun and it makes me happy. Not saying that I won't do anything else because I probably will because I jump through everything all the time. So who knows? Isabella, you just said that uh, you like helping people. You like helping people. And uh, at a very young age, I know you're a very, very busy girl. So, okay, what do you do in your spare time besides exercising your superpowers? <laughs> your superpowers, <laughs> like, I can't believe it. Like, you're you're a writer, you're, you're an actor, you're, you're like, you're like everything. <laughs> um, what do you do? Like, what do you do to relax? I make ramen. <gasps> I make good ramen though. I put, put kimchi in it. I put ichiban where I have it with me. Oh, so oh, good. Can I see it? Can I see uh, the ramen? Do you have it there? I have a photo, but <laughs> I haven't made it me. I had ramen today too good ramen. It's not like instant ramen, but it is instant ramen, but I don't use the the, the flavor packets. I, I put actual what? broth in there and I use um, miso stuff, paste, and I use uh, sesame oil, a lot of sesame oil. Oh, I have that too in the house. We love sesame oil. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I love ramen too. But I, I don't know, I, I tried making ramen one time. Uh, you know, I had an Instapot and I tried making ramen, but I, I think in order for you to make ramen, uh, I mean, the proper way, uh, <laughs> it takes a long time actually. Oh, yes. To, to have the broth, so you make, you make the broth yourself. Oh, no, it, my mom makes amazing no, broth. Ma oh, your mom makes it. Oh, it's amazing. My mom. mom makes the broth. I assemble everything. Oh, wow. You you are lucky. Chicken feet. She <laughs> makes the broth with chicken feet. 
there's nothing no wrong way. with that. It tastes really good. And I like I use the broth and then um I like my noodles not undercooked but more stiff than mushy. I don't like it when it gets mushy. That's nasty. So oh. I put everything, all of the vegetables in and the scallions and the spices. And then I boil my egg and put it in ice water so I can get the shell off and cut it in half and then bathe it in soy sauce, sesame oil, warm sesame oil and um, uh, sriracha. And then I put it all together with my kimchi and my bacon and my eggs and then my deep fried tempura seaweed and more scallions and sesame seeds. I'm getting <laughs> hungry right now. I'm really <laughs> getting hungry. I haven't had anything. No, oh, yes. so no nothing. Not since I woke up, nothing. Nothing yet because sometimes I do that, you know. I'm, There's so much I'm I'm lazy. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so lazy you can't eat. <laughs> no, but I think you are a better ramen maker than me. Because <laughs> you said about the egg, I know you have to do that. Like, you know, you, you, you have to put, uh, when you uh, boil the egg, there's a system for you oh, to yeah. do that. And then you know, it, comes it has right. to be boiling hot when you put yeah. it, when right? Put it in ice water. And then how long do you have? To, I haven't tried that because, okay. as, as I said, I'm lazy. So <laughs> I'm a lazy cook. So when, how long do you have to put the, the air? So um, the boiling water. You want the middle to be runny because yeah, I just I can't get it. that. I so can't you, get you that. leave it, you let it boil and then you leave it for five minutes. And then once you're done, you uh, run out all the hot water. This is how I do it. This is probably not the right way, <laughs> but it, it works. So then I put it in cold water with ice in it that I've let sit. And then I let the eggs sit until the eggs are cold. And then I wait for that while I put my noodles in. And then after that, I like crunch it. And then I put it in the water and take all the shells off. Cause then the water separates the layer of the egg and then the egg shell. And then after you've done that, you cut it in half and put it, uh, oh no, hey, don't cut it in half. Just put the whole thing inside your like seasoning. Inside the thing. Yeah, because if, it, if it's hot sesame oil, then it's going to heat up the egg again. But opening it just makes all the runny stuff. I did that, it was a bad idea, it didn't work. So you leave the whole thing, you put it in the stuff, you wait and it marinates and then you cut it and it, it tastes good. <laughs> Done. Wow, I gotta I got try that. Smart. That's how I do it. Maybe I'm gonna try that after we, <laughs> uh, we talk. We'll be back, don't go away. Oh, my name's Louisa Marshall and here's my family, Steve, Kimmy, and Zania. And we're doing the Angels Walk for Autism 2021 here in Vancouver, Canada. We would like to give all our love and support to all our Kababayans back home and all over the world who's supporting the Autism Society Philippines. We love you. You guys are simply the best. My name is Isabella Strickland and before we did the interview, I was really nervous and before we even did the workshop, I was not prepared. Like, I didn't even realize that I was really doing this. I thought there was going to be more people and I didn't realize it was so one-on-one. -on -one. So when we did the workshop, I think it kind of boosted my confidence and gave me more knowledge about how to interview people, how to connect with people, how to introduce themselves. So. It just gave me a lot of confidence to do this. And now that I'm here, I realize that I do have confidence and that I can do this and that it's awesome to be here. Yeah. Yes, Isabella. Good. Yeah. 
you know what? Let, let's let's talk about how you are empowering other young girls like you are. Uh, you experienced bullying at a very young age. And in the movie, My Red Ball, the story is about your own bullying experiences? Well, when I was at my camp, the first film that ever came to my mind was about someone being bullied. And uh, it, it was circled around a red ball and someone stealing a red ball and then people having their back and it was said in school. But I have to understand that I'm in a group and I need other people's opinions. So they wanted to do a horror film and I thought, why not? Why don't we do that? And then I thought, why don't we circle it around an object? Because usually haunted objects are, are quite easy to, to portray in film. So um, I chose a red ball because I already thought of a red ball. So we did that. And I wanted to add some type of bullying aspect. So the main character or the character who is haunted by the forest is uh, the girl who got bullied. And I thought all of it came together beautifully in the end for the amount of stuff that I had learned in that short week. I thought I did a good job for how old I was and my group, my group did such a great job. If I could see them again, I congratulate them. We did a good job, guys. <laughs> and then um, in the end, I feel like that was a really good first film for me to make because it just set me off to do more. And it inspired me to do more urban legends because I realized that's such a fun thing to do. So uh, Isabella, tell me, what are the challenges of playing your own story? Uh, well, you're obviously in a group of people and you need, you need help with the, these things and other people's opinions can make your film way better than you can imagine it to be because usually you think of the baseline and then you layer on that but you you only can think of so much opinion because you only have your experience so having other people's experience build on to that which actually fits it's like a huge puzzle but everyone has the puzzle pieces so if you put the puzzle together and it ends up being nice that means you have a good team who works together well and who can come up with something amazing and you should probably keep that team because that sounds like a good team and if you come up with a good film and everything fits together well, that's probably the best outcome I could think of for that situation. But there's hardship with that too. So if you if you find people who don't fit well together or the conversion of say um, a written book into a script itself or the script writing process at all, it can be quite hard. And th there's workarounds for that, but you need to ask people for help too. That's amazing, Isabella. That's that's really amazing. So what do you say to all the bullies out there? <laughs> I've never got asked that question. Probably the backstory to why you are probably getting um, the feeling to bully other people is because that you are bullied yourself in some way. Like your parents could be mean to you or your siblings could be mean to you and you need to let that up but being mean to other people isn't the best option because you don't see how much it really hurts them like it hurt me quite a bit and i understand there's so much worse bullying out there but i don't understand why you do it it doesn't be nice to people it feels so much better. Yeah, be nice and be kind, right? Uh, so I, I watched one of your interviews where you mentioned that I, I asked you a while ago that you love helping people and you have been a, a variety youth ambassador. So how was that experience for you helping other youth and all those who really need it? I loved it. It was amazing. The first time I got the opportunity to do it was probably the best experience I had on TV or working together. Everything was alive, everyone was excited to raise money for people who needed it and to, to help people out because variety has changed so many lives for so many people. If I didn't have variety, I wouldn't go to the school that has helped me and changed me so much to the potential that I am right now. Like, I've written a book with my dad. Um, I have films. 
but like I'm doing what makes me truly happy because I found my potential through through everything and all of the tools I've got. So helping other people reach their potential with the things that they love or the things that make them feel happy is amazing. That's another wonderful answer. That's that's really cool. A while ago we were talking that you have been uh, on set on you know filming, and yeah. and of course you can't tell me anything about it. Of course, I know that uh, firsthand. And uh, so is this a feature film? And uh, how is it with you now uh, with all the COVID restrictions, you know, during the pandemic that uh, you are going on set? How's that? How how safe are you? Now they're, they're, they're very safe. They, they test the, um, the uh, crew a lot um, for COVID and um, they make sure that everyone is being safe, everyone is socially distanced, unless it, it has to do with the scene. You, you always get masks after you're done, and um, you get asked if you want to go back to your trailer because you have personal space there. So they're, they're very safe with their production and their production time, and they're effective with everything that they need. So this production is amazing, and they're really responsible for everything that is happening. So I'm really glad for that. So how long are you still going to be on set with this particular um, project? Only two more days. Two more days. Ooh, yeah. Wow, only two more days. That seems like a, a long time. I mean, two more days on set is amazing, right? So you've been, you've been enjoying yourself so yeah. far on set? Yes, it's a it's a beautiful story, I must say. Yes. So tell me about your book. That's <laughs> wow. about the, the last one that 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 has the character like Aura Bella. Tell me about that book. Well, oh, Aura is for Oracle. And um, it's the Oracles of Aura Bella. And I thought that was really fun. So, so get that. Um, it's yeah, about a girl. Right. Bring that. You had fun writing that book. Yes, it was a lot of fun. It was. It took five years, but it's just time. It was fun. I I did it with my dad. He scribed for me because ADHD is hard. Um, and I can't focus on one thing for a certain amount of time before I kind of drift off. So, uh, staying writing with the book or super intensely focusing because that's something people with ADHD can do. They can hyper focus on things. So getting into that zone of doing that was quite hard, but it was really fun. I, I quite enjoyed it and I wouldn't do it again because I need to write another one because you need to read it in order to figure out why I need to write another one. Well, you gotta write another one. That um, five years is worth it. I heard it is really good. Well. I have one last question for you, Ms. Bello. If you possess superpowers to make a change in the world, what will be the first thing that you want to change? Hmm. I'd say there's there's two things, three. Okay, okay. Like, okay. I would have to eventually pick between them. It would either be for COVID to or to just like finish. And then um, for global warming is a very big thing and it's, it's hurting our ozone layer a lot. And I feel like that that would be very, very important for us to, to settle with that. So we would figure out ways to be sustainable in every household. Um, or for um, most of the people in power around the world to not be bad in some way or another like we better people in power for better options and better better care for their country and better sustainability and, and better care for the people in that country and everyone around it because having an equal world and having everyone happy is very, very important and then you know there's a lot of other problems with this and with everything else but i feel like those are pretty big ones Isabella, we really need your superpower right now. <laughs> we really do. So, okay, tell me, is there anything else you want to say? Ah, to other girls, to inspire other girls like you? 
for anyone watching who's like me or a girl or anyone who needs a little hope in their day. You are probably doing a really good job with your life right now and, and keep going. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Isabella, you're such a wonderful girl. And thank you so much. You are a true gift to the world, a true gem. Uh, your parents must be so proud of you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Simply the Best. And we hope to see you again. And I want to hear more about your next project. Thank you. Bye. Mwah. Hope you enjoy the show. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Please don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Always be kind. Let's stop bullies and the coronavirus. Please wear a mask. Stay safe. Wash your hands. We'll see you all next week again. Bye-bye. Um,